Please. What's up, Boss Babes? Welcome to another episode of Boss Please. How are you ladies doing today? Good. Thanks, Nancy. Yes. How were you a boss this week? Megan, let's well, start with you. Melinda, you and I were both a boss yesterday because... <laughs> we were. You know, I know this is going to be the most basic thing that I've ever said, but you have to stock up on your gram photos. You just 100%. have to. And it gets stressful. <laughs> I know, but it gets stressful when you don't have stockpiled photos because you're like, oh my gosh, I have nothing to post. Right. So you and I went to the Happy Place, we which did. is a pop up shop here or pop up thing here in Los Angeles where they have all these attraction, attraction. Pop-up Let's attraction. talk it. Yeah, yeah it's an attraction. <laughs> Whatever. But we have all the pictures, and now, and that's how we were a boss. We we stocked up on our social we media did. photos, and we did. yeah. All the while hating social media. Oh my gosh, there was so much basicness happening in that place, but we were equally as basic, so I, can't, <laughs> even, I can't even make fun of but it. But we weren't as full face as some people. When we drove up, Megan was like, all of those girls you guys, like to have their entire face on. It was like, Coachella. It was Coachella what? at the happy place. Like, they had the entire oh. Sephora store on their face. Oh, oh, so they, like, got hair and makeup done. Yes. And they went to the happy place. Right. It was At least my hair was just blow dried and i had just normal <laughs> you look good Your hair i mean you guys point. looked cute my thing was so like okay melinda and megan are much more social media savvy than i am <laughs> and like i don't really post professional photos of myself but they do all the time because you know they're just fabulous and when they went and i saw them going i was shocked last night when i got home after i was catching up on everyone's pictures that they hadn't posted that much and i was like wow like if i went i'd be posting like all the pictures i took and like oh no jill that's not what you do. <laughs> I'm like, you have to preserve okay. the pictures. Yeah, you can't just throw all the gold. You got to roll them day. out. You got to roll and them out. Yeah, no, it just doesn't work that way, Joe. But it like, did you bring a change of clothes? Like, we thought almost about did. it. We almost. <laughs> I was like, maybe we should go with layers. Layers. Yes. <laughs> did you? So did you like no, take off a? Ge- oh, okay. No, we but we did some in black and white. There's yeah. a, it, it's it's gonna work. It will work. And plus, you'll you'll filter it in with other photos that you're gonna Absolutely. post. It's fine. It's gonna work. It's, it's gonna, gonna work. be great. Got at wow. least three weeks worth of pictures. Yes. So yes. This is like this is down to a science. Yeah, it it's a thing. So it you guys is. just gonna like hit up every uh, art installation around the city. There's a new one called Candytopia coming. Yeah, we're gonna go we there. We talked about it. Okay. But also, wow. we're just gonna go downtown and take pictures in front of the walls. Then we could do costume changes. Yes. <laughs> There's so many beautiful, beautiful graffiti like, murals walls. and graffiti walls. Yeah. yeah. It's. It's, all it's really walls. great. So it's it's all about yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess I just need to get on your level. Like I don't know. Join get us. on our Join level, us. Jill. It's so how are you a boss? Seeing as you didn't stock up on your gram photos, <laughs> I did not. Though I took some cute photos for the gram. Um, I my boyfriend is amazing, and he took me to Dana Point, which is past Laguna Niguel, and it is so gorgeous down there. Like we stayed right on the water, and it was beautiful, and our room was amazing. It was just really special. Um, and we went there for a special occasion, and he, we were going to go to a fancy dinner, so he called ahead, and I have really bad allergies. I'm sure I've talked about it on the podcast before, but, like, eating out is I, – I get, like, a lot of anxiety about it. Yeah. And I like to make sure that I know that I can have something there, so I look at the menu beforehand. I decide what I want. It turns into a whole thing, and going out is, like, always a project. We cook a lot at home. So we went to this restaurant and we pulled up. It was so nice. And we walk inside and they seat us right away and they seat us in the bar of all places. (laughs) I was like, I couldn't hear him. We sat down. We were waiting to order drinks and it was so loud. There was just like, I mean, people were having a really great time. Like it was a, it was a bump in restaurant. People living it up in Dana Um, Point. Yeah. Like it was, it was beautiful, but there were holiday parties going on. There was like one in the bar, one on the porch. And it was just, people were just like drinking a lot, Mm -hmm. yelling. And we were there to celebrate. So it just didn't feel like much celebrating, even though he had called ahead, talked to the manager and everything. So he asked if we could get our table switched and they said no. They said like, Uh, oh, our, mm -hmm. our time was up. Uh, this was the next table for two. This is what you get. Oh my god! Yeah, the cards fell. Whatever. They couldn't help. <laughs> so I could tell that he was getting really anxious. And in that moment, I kind of like became a boss inside my head. And I'm like, all right, well, I could feed into his anxiety and make it worse. Mm-hmm. Or I could say, it's cool. Like, you want to go? Let's go. Mm-hmm. And you know what? We left. And it was the best thing because we were walking and – Instead of letting sort of that anxiousness take over me that's like, oh, where are we going to eat? What are we going to do? He was getting to the point where he was, like, frustrated. He was like, let's just go get pizza. Like, there was this gluten-free pizza place. I'm like, no. Like, let's just keep walking. So we walked. And we ended up finding this great place. And I saw it from across the street. I was like, we're going to go there. 
and he was shocked at how decisive I was. So uh, to sort of like pull everything in, it was like I was a boss this week because I was decisive because I'm not, not. decisive <laughs> ever, ever. I'm not decisive. I am that girl that if he's like, what do you want to eat? I'm like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'm just hungry. I don't know. So for our real talk this week, um, I-, I wanted to talk about something that I have difficulty with and I wanted to know what your guys' are f- feelings are on it. Um, do you find it hard to admit your faults? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I Megan, am, you start. I am yeah, never wrong. I am never wrong. Uh, no, I, yeah, no, I'm, I get very defensive. I don't, I don't know if it's like only child syndrome or whatever, but I'm always right. Mm-hmm. But I do have to say like, if I am wrong or like I am at fault, it just, it just takes me a second mm-hmm. and then I have to, and then I see the other person's side and I'm like, all right, you know what? Yep. I was wrong in that situation, but right away, I'm definitely, mm-hmm. definitely defensive, mm-hmm. and I, yeah, I have a hard time admitting my faults. I think everyone, to an extent, is defensive. No, I think I'm um, on another level, sure. though. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, totally different nah. story. That's hilarious. Um, I'd say I used to. I think I, I, I do more so now, I admit when I'm wrong, but also, I just want, like, whatever the situation is to be over with, so if I have to be the one to take the higher road, then I'll just do it. Because I just want to move on with my life. Mm-hmm. I'm like too old to deal with <laughs> to deal with the situation, um, but yeah, I think I grow from admitting that I'm wrong, and you know, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings if I did something, or if I'm completely wrong about information. I want to be educated, so it's taken me a while to get here though, because 99 percent of the time I used to think I was right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm stubborn. I yeah. mean, I, th- I think in a work environment, I have an okay time admitting if I'm wrong because right. obviously I want to. Um, you know, I'm not into throwing people under the bus because I've mm-hmm. had it done to me too many times <laughs> to, you know, to ever like think that that would be okay to do to another person. Um, but I think just like small petty arguments, like I'm, I'm always right. And I, I don't know if I'll ever get better at it. Mm-hmm. I feel like my boyfriend, like he's just so quick to call me out when I'm wrong. Yeah. Like even like the littlest stuff, like song lyrics. I... You they are in my it. head. Yeah. <laughs> I am like, th- these are the words. Right. And he's like, they're not the words. And You're I'm like, like, no, this is it. No, they're not. We have so many conversations. We're just like, ask Google. Why don't you ask Google? Okay. <laughs> because I am that. I-, I-, I need to work on it. I'm like, I'm like slowly starting to get better because, you know, it's really 50-50. Like half the time he's right, half the time I'm right. But also like I'm very quick to call somebody else out on their fault or mistake. Oh, 100%. <laughs> um, yeah. Just because I'm like, I would hope that you would do the same for me. Yeah. I expect that courtesy. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's hilarious. It is a work in progress. But like you said, it only child thing. I think it has to do with me that I was the oldest. Mm. So yeah, I was sense. always praised for everything I said or did for the right. longest time. And then my brother came along and it was right. like, okay, we got to even this out. Um, and same thing with like my extended family. Cause like I'm the oldest grandchild. Right. So it's like, oh my God. I will move heaven and earth for you. You're right. 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 You are perfect. And oh yeah, it, it definitely <laughs> has to do with like family and where you and come because you, you're, you're come, the youngest. Yeah. I'm the youngest. Yeah. So how does that? Well, I think <laughs> actually it's probably different for you because it's... your sister was probably like, "I'm always right." And right. You just had to I deal didn't with get it. to be right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, and I didn't get to really do anything wrong or get in trouble really because she wouldn't let me. I love you, Jamika. Um. <laughs> But I was also going to say that you kind of also get into this headspace where you know you're wrong, but, like, you're already so far in it. Like, you're like, I got to commit to this yep. right now. I can't yeah. really go back. Like, I'm already being stubborn. I'm not going to say, okay, you're right. Oh, of right. course. Yeah, you I'm have like, to commit to that. Oh, welcome to, to my life. Oh, welcome to my life. I'm like, all right, I am like wrong. you're too far gone. But if I can't I'm going to go, go down, back. Yeah. I'm just going to go down a little bit. <laughs> right, like, right, right. Well, you're right. There's always, always a but. but. There's never a, you are right. Exactly. Period. I just feel like we are all a work in progress. So yes. if we can admit the issues that we have with ourselves, if we can admit our own faults. Yeah, at least we know that. We're just constantly <laughs> evolving and improving. I feel like nobody is perfect. If, if you're perfect, perfect, you're perfectly screwed up. Yes. If you say you're perfect, I don't believe this in perfect. True. But you know who is perfect? Miss Stacy Ike. Yes. Oh my God. She close. is, she is uh, the uh, fabulous host of the first live show on Oprah Winfrey Network. Oh, amazing. Megan and I were so excited to sit down with her. Melinda. I was gone. I had a gig. I was working, y'all. I was she bossing. was being a boss. She being was a being boss. a boss. But she listened to Stacey's interview. It's and It's incredible. Uh, you it's guys great. are in for a treat. So uh, we'll be right back with that. All right. 
Welcome back, bosses. So like we said before, we have Stacy Ike in studio today. She is a TV host, actress, and entrepreneur, and also, lucky enough, my friend. <laughs> uh, she is the host of Own Tonight on the Oprah Winfrey Network. It is the first live show on the network. How badass That's is that? That's so badass. Right? That's why she's here. <laughs> <laughs> she is also a true believer in fighting for your fairy tale, and I'm yeah. not going to give away why. I'll let her talk about it. So, Stacy, how are you today? Hi, guys. Hi. That intro, love. Um, yes. I'm super excited to be here, and... Congratulations to you, bosses. This is awesome. Oh, hey, so thank good. you. I mean, so we're good. just thrilled to have you here <laughs> and people like you here. And uh, so let's dive in. TV host. Yeah. Jill and I know a little something about that, too. But, like, what specifically – kind of talk about your journey and how yeah. you got to be on OWN. Girl. Um, it's a story. It's I'm such so a excited long for this story. story. Yeah, I'm like – and I don't even know if it's the journey – well, I'm going to say – it's definitely not over. The journey's still sure, unfolding. Sure. So I think even when some people are like, how is it right now? I'm like, honestly, this is one chapter in the really big book that mm -hmm. I really pray continues to unfold. So as of right now, I've lived in Los Angeles. It'll be four years in January. So I moved here, yeah, a little bit less than four years ago. I studied journalism in college. I came out here a couple times for an internship and like knew LA was going to be in my future in some way. And so when I moved here, you, it's a typical story where like you sleep on the couch and you work at a restaurant, like all that actually happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it just was funny because a few months into that journey, I met an incredible person, Tiana Hobson, who put me in connection to After Buzz. And she was like, you're really fun. You like this show, like come on here. So I started working at After Buzz. Um, I was also working at a few other um, smaller networks as well, like just doing carpets and things like that and getting myself out there because I didn't know exactly what it meant to be a celebrity host. Like I. I thought about what it meant when you're studying from afar, but when you're here, the questions just you different. ask, like it's, it's just, just different. different. You yeah. can't plan for it. And that's just the truth. And so in that process, uh, I started doing a lot of red carpets, started doing a lot of uh, traveling, getting so blessed to do smaller gigs with like, I, I did a job with like Mountain Dew, which opened up a door for me where I found out like, wait, you can literally just talk for a living. Like they literally hired me to just make people laugh for two hours and like bring energy. And like, mm -hmm. I was like, <laughs> this is a joke. Oh, wow, that's me already. You know what I'm saying? I was like, wait, wait, wait. You know, I like, I, just, for this? I didn't even believe them. And so they just really wanted me to, like, you know, keep the crowd going for two hours, do some gifts, things like that. So, like, opportunities like that. Um, and, and it's so funny because I tell the story a lot, and, it, and the next story I'm about to tell, and I can't believe you're here while I tell it because you don't know what happened the day that you had put my name in the hat for Smashbox. Mm -hmm. I had just, that was years ago, and she doesn't even know how much I, like, honor her for that moment because well, one thing that we sort of have talked about on the podcast is mm -hmm. like helping others yeah and when there's an opportunity to help others you can either you know not help your friend out it's very competitive out yeah, here yeah. And you you know I was up for this job for this mm -hmm. audition mm -hmm. and when they brought me in the casting director was like is there anybody else that you think would be great for this I was like honestly there's this girl Stacy Ike she has amazing energy she's gorgeous I think that she would do a great job and sure enough, she booked the freaking game. Oh, gig. my God. I'm talking about emotions. Like, she has no... <laughs> girl, when she had sent me the... Or when I got the email that was like, Hey, Jillian, um, you know, referred you to this job. Just a few days before that, I'm literally sitting at my dining table, like, crying because... I'm, and I'm trying to figure out what happened because there was two major times this happened within the same year. So either I had just gotten a job offered to me that was, like, not for me. Like, it was a reality show. And I was super like, okay... I need to get out there, but I know mm -hmm. what I want. And that's another thing that I always give people advice on. Like, you have to figure out what you don't want first to get to what you do want. You have to make Ooh, the hard decisions, that's deep. I feel that so much, girl. girl. I feel that so much. Because people are like, well, how do you know what you want? I'm like, honestly, sometimes you don't know. You got to weed through a few things. And Ugh. you have to decide mm -hmm. as you're weeding. So I remember I when they that. were like, hey, you know, do you want this job? And I was like, I just turned it down. And I was crying. I'm like, God, like. Why would you give me such a cool opportunity? But in my heart, my spirit, I was like, this isn't for me. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even know what they wanted me to do. You know, they were like, we just want you to come be cute on TV. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, as soon as people start saying that, you're like, that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. And then I get this email two days later, and it's this email from, you know, the person that Jillian had referred me to. And I'm telling you my emotions. Like, I lost it. Like, that was such a powerful weekend for me. Just being, again, just being able to be in your element, hosting and whatever. And so that year really opened my eyes to the fact that like you can do whatever you want of course it takes time it takes a lot of diligence it takes a lot of mistakes trials all of that is true but you really can have the dream job or you can have like the version of the fairy tale you deserve and so 
girl, I don't know, that opened so many doors, like, and I just really want to, like, publicly thank you for being the type of friend who always put, I, girl, like, you're in, like, my podcast, my journals, like, I have literally brought you up to several people in my life that, like, that was such a big year for me, and that job and one other job where another friend put me in had, I'm like, those two changed my perspective on not only the type of woman you need to be, yes, that's the kind of woman you need to be at all times, but the type of person you need to be when you're finally getting to the room. Because you prepare so hard, and then you get in the front of Smashbox, and it's like, okay, all this stuff you're preparing for, like, are you ready or no? Mm-hmm. And that, those two, I learned the best lessons that weekend. So seriously, shout out and thank you to you. Like, I've never well, been able to tell you that in person. No. Well, isn't it better to lift people up? Where else are you going to go? Like, and, and that's something else that, like, yeah, as you said, you know, L.A. can be a little competitive, but I just refuse to be a part of that that version of the city. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that it is what it is. I know it can be very competitive. I know it's all about a look or whatever, but it's like, they kind of say that women don't support each other and don't. I always say you can be bitter or you can be better. Girl, yes. it's really, it's one of the two. And really like B-I-T, they don't even sound cute. You know, you need to go with the better. It sounds better. It's spelled better. Like mm-hmm. just do it. So exactly. that's kind of, you know, but that whole year propelled more years. I started, I worked behind the scenes. I did some production jobs, got fired because <laughs> I sucked. I remember that. Um, ooh, that was a bad girl, like fired. And I deserved to be fired. That was the funniest part. I deserved it. And like, I knew I deserved it. And that was the hard, I was like, wow, like you really deserve to be fired. You're like, not good. So that was hard. But what was beautiful is the day they fired me, they were like, one day you're going to be employing us. But you're fired. But we just want you to know, like, we we see your talent. It just isn't this. And so that was, like, such an interesting moment. I was like, thanks? But dang, I really needed that check. So, you know, then I started kind of, I guess that propelled, like, more red carpets. I was with After Buzz, Black Hollywood Live. Uh, finally got an agent. Started doing different gigs in that way. And then, you know, we lead to the Oprah moment, which was within the past year. Last year this time, no, last year, like July, I had interviewed her for the first time at a red carpet. And, you know, you think like, Interviewed okay, Oprah? Right, right. Wait. I know, Let's I just know. take a moment. Okay, She's sorry. She's like, the first time I interviewed Oprah. Like, so nonchalant. Like, girl. Yeah, but you don't understand. Like, Stacey, I, I've known her for years, and she talks to everybody like they're Oprah. And I think that's why she works. Because she has all of this confidence <laughs> when she goes up to these people who most of the time she doesn't know <laughs> or has never met and talks to them like they are her best friend. Am I not wrong? Uh, I think I figured out that the... Like, I mean, I just give you what... I'm feeling at the time, and most of the times, if I'm in these situations, like I'm so super excited to be there. It's a privilege to be able to do what we do, and I definitely don't take it lightly. So yes, I've definitely walked up to some people and been like, "Hey, girl," and they're like, "I've never met you," or they say like, "I have met you," and it was one time, and it was kind of fuzzy. But now I'm just gonna act like it wasn't, and that is That's the funniest part. Hysterical. Because I'm like, I know it's been six months, love. There's no way you remember. But wait, but cool. Walk me through how you first talked to Oprah. Were you like, "Girl," right, right, like, right? And, and was she like, "Wait, do I know her?" Right, like, right. What? No, because she. Well, I don't want to say she knows every like she knows who she knows because I'm sure she meets several people, but um, it was I mean it was clearly the first time, so I just acted like it was the first time, and I also met her on a press line, so my interaction with her, I had to just think like, what's the smartest way to interact with Oprah when you know you only have like a minute and a half to do it? I'm very into like really deep interviews and like mm-hmm. things being extremely you know intentional and things like that, but I was like. You're not going to be able to ask her, like, tell me about growing up. You're not going to be able to do that. So make her laugh. That was my biggest goal was to make her laugh. And so I did. So I asked her about emojis. And I was like, dang, was that smart? Like, you know, you I went really millennial with it, but it made her laugh. She has fun. Like, the bo- video I have of her in my reel, like, she's just, she's great. That's awesome. And so I was like, awesome. Okay, that was worth it. And so after the interview, there was the preview for the show Greenleaf. And so we went in. Look at Boston She's during Boston? this interview. Oh my I gosh! Sorry, it. guys. Uh, no, do not apologize. We, we love are it. moving like all the way on live in action. So right, I'm like mm. anyway. So with that said, I went in to the screening for Greenleaf, and I was like, wow, this is so exciting. This is super fun. And she was there. And like, you're thinking Oprah's gonna like leave and not sit around and hang out with all of you guys because why does she have to do that? And she did. She was super open That's amazing. and walking around and hanging out. So I went up to her and I was like, let's, you know, let's talk. And I was trying to figure out the, like, what could I talk to her about besides the show? And I had talked to my, uh, one of my managers before I'd walked, like went to the interview and I was like, hey, so I'm interviewing Oprah today, possibly. What do you think I should talk to them about? And they were, uh, my manager was like, well, you're a huge fan of avocados. And so she, you should talk about that. And I was like, that's so weird. And she was like, I really think you should. 
So I brought it up. I was like, hey, girl, so, like, I heard you're writing this cookbook and you got a whole section of avocado. She was like, oh, my gosh, I love... And we just went in. And my friend was standing there and she was like, you and Oprah are talking about avocado. Like, do you understand? There is a video. I will show it to you guys after this. Literally, she's screaming. She's like, this is not happening. This is not happening. I'm like, shh, it's happening. So stop. She's standing in front of us. It was the most hilarious moment ever. So we take a picture. It's awesome. We move on. And then a few months later, I get to meet her again because it's a different TV show that she's doing. And I was still in a press line for it. So when I uh, met her again, or when I saw her again, I was like, wow, like so excited about the last time, blah, blah, blah. She was like, oh my God, I just watched your podcast. And on Greenleaf. Like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, you got to be lying. Like, that's not a real sentence you would say. So I'm just going to ignore her. So I was like, no, you did it. You know, I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, you were on, you had Ty White on there, which I did. And I was like, oh my gosh, you just watched the, the podcast. So in my crazy self, I go, well, when are you going to come on? That's not how you, what? You don't talk to Oprah like that. You don't even ask her those kind of questions. Are you serious? So I was like, when are you going to come on? She was like, well, I can't come, come on, but I'll call in one second. Goes to get her assistant, brings her assistant, and literally like handles the whole thing. And it's like, yeah, like I want to be on her podcast. So that was a Monday. Wednesday, she comes on the podcast. It's awesome. And then that was kind of, I don't, I don't want to say it was history because I know it took some time in between that because that was like last year, August. And so then we fast forward to being in my hotel room in February of this year, getting an email from um, the production company that did Own Tonight and was like, hey, Oprah's a fan of yours and the other people on your podcast and we're thinking about doing this show. And so you're like, Exactly how I just froze. That's exactly how I like I'm, that. I'm frozen yeah, for you. Like, like I'm literally on the edge of my seat. The like the whole what? thing was like okay. So she's I read that email and you're like okay, this is crazy. So I call my agent. I'm like dude, like dude, like dude. So I'm like freaking. <laughs> I'm like calling everybody. You know, calling my people that like I'm on my team. I'm like so I just got this direct email. Like what do we do about this? So anyway, we just we uh, continued to investigate and they were auditioning people and and whatever the case was. And so yeah, I mean. It ended up being they wanted one host to do the after show, and I ended up being the one that they chose. And I mean, my God, it was just crazy. And she did an amazing job. Oh my well, God. she does an amazing Thank job. You. But like, the, that was honestly, crazy, right? Like that was the fact that you just said is the fact that you just said <laughs> Oprah was a fan of mine, and like, I just I don't know the girl. day. The day. <laughs> I mean, you girl, you have made it. Oprah knows you, and she's a fan uh, of you. Girl, I mean, I, and this is the thing. I, I also, like, really honor the people that were on my podcast as well, um, Shaka and Carter, because I think she was a fan of the dynamic of being, of, like, a show like that, mm -hmm. where you interview people and you make the show sound even more exciting than it is, even though it's a great show. Like, you just, the fan element is always the best, and that is my favorite part about being a TV host or a reporter or whatever is I'm a fan first. Every show I've done, either at any of any of the places I've done it at, I'm a fan of the show. Mm -hmm. Usually I don't even do shows I'm not a fan of because you're not going to get the real personality. Sure, sure. And so to have that experience where she was like, I'm a, just, I'm a fan of people who can make and bring life to the show even more, that was what my biggest like treasure was mm -hmm. out of it. Because I was like, wow, like that was me just being myself. I didn't do anything different. Even, even during the show, guys, like... You know, you get this huge network show and you're like, okay, like, I have to be this whole new person. And they're like, yeah, we low-key just hired you to be yourself. It was insane. that My producer said it to me all the time. He's like, you're driving the bus. I'm like, ah! and it was like, you know, it was live. So that was yeah. another thing. When I got hired, I was like, it's not going to be live, live. Like, that's, people don't even do that anymore. Like, they're not going to, they're not going to give a girl who's never been on TV a live show. They're not going to do that. They're going to live to tape so they can edit and no couple days in they were like so it's live <laughs> i just freaked oh, out wait, was what crazy. was your biggest fear because like i Whew. i've just done like live youtube stuff yeah. but being on live television but don't even say just because that is what prepared me mm. all the live and th right now we're live it doesn't even matter that like we get that's why i asked how much editing do you guys do and you guys were like no we just let it fly it's live then right you sure. know what i'm saying yes it's live to, like they will hear it later but we're in a real moment right now mm -hmm. so i had to really remember that when i was on the show i was like they're in the real, we're in the real moment right now and it doesn't matter that it's like live or not. I'm, I just have to act like we get to, whatever, sure. like how it would really be. And so biggest fear in it, I think was just, I mean, commercial breaks because that was very new to me. I mean, in other jobs or opportunities I've had, I haven't necessarily had to break at a specific time. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was definitely challenging and he would be like, you know, and, oh, and cause I have like somebody in my ear mm -hmm. and then I have my guests and then I have my stage manager and then I have the audience. So that was crazy. I never gave the audience the time of day. And so that was <laughs> just the truth. I, I couldn't either. do it. Like basically the show would wrap and I'd be like, oh my God, hi, 
having guys like every show, everybody would laugh because like I was after the show was wrapped, I would then be like, "Hey guys," and they would all laugh because they were like, "Wow!" Like she didn't even look at us, and they no one would, everyone would understand why because mm-hmm. I was just like the way to keep on track is to be looking at my prompter, look at the hands I need to look at, looking and listening. Yes, you would have to because there was just too many. There's too many factors at once. So I think just the I wouldn't say that the fear. Well, no, it was a little bit of like a of a nervous thing. Like, am I always gonna get out on time? Because when they'd be like, "Hey, I know they're talking, but wrap them up." You're like, "They're talking though." <laughs> like, and they're like, "Doesn't matter, wrap them up." I'm like, "Who does that?" Like, it was. I know. Oh, that part got crazy. But other than that, I mean, I felt very prepared for the opportunity, and that's something like I give God like all the glory on that. And then just in general, like all the opportunities I've had, I'm like, wow, like every little moment prepared you for the big moment. Every single little moment. Right now we're preparing for the next thing. You guys have no idea where your podcast is gonna go. Like mm-hmm. all the little stuff that we have to mm-hmm. do to get this together, girl, you have no idea. So I just I'm grateful for all the things that I didn't realize like led to being able to do that. So that was that was crazy. I will say, you know, anytime anybody brings up your name, I always say that you are a true hustler because mm-hmm. and I'm not trying to like blow smoke, but Really, you know, you did a lot of stuff for free just to put your name out there and to be noticed. And, like, I mean, follow Stacey Ike on social media. (laughs) You see every day she's doing something. Like I said, oh, what do you have to do after? She's like, oh, I have a dinner. I'm preparing for a shoot. I got this. I got this. this." And I'm like, we're lucky enough to even have her on here because, honestly, you pack your schedule so much. And you talk about fighting for your fairy tale. Mm -hmm. And I believe you when you say that yeah. because I've been witness to the fight so talk a little bit about that and what that message means to you and how sort of you came up with that mm-hmm. yeah oh my god well first of all I love you um mm-hmm. second so five year fairy tale is just I honor that moment and I I believe it I wear it on my sleeve because it came out of such a real like portion of my life so it was earlier this year and I had just gotten the show and a few episodes had gone by and I was getting advice from like so many people, team, producers, whatever, whatever, and a lot of really great feedback. And I was just like at the apartment one day and I was talking to my brand manager and who's also one of my really good girlfriends. So we're having a conversation and and I'm just literally saying like, this is the fairy tale I fought for. Like I literally said that and she was like, wow. And I was like, no, it's crazy because it's not even over yet. That's what really hit me. I was like, I'm this age. I've only been here this long. And it's never a time or an age thing. It's not. But I think for me, I just knew like how much harder I thought. I mean, I still have to work hard all the time. But I knew at that time, I was like, wow, like everything you put in really, everything you fought for created this moment you're living in where like tomorrow you get to go to work as like the TV host of a live show. Like it was just to talk about a TV show. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I was like, this is crazy. Like this is the fairy tale. And so I said it like that, and everybody was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Like, should we should do something with it. We should put that on shirt. I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, that's how you crazy, beautiful team around you who's like, wait, what did you just say? We need to make that a business, you know? So, anyway, um, it kind of started where, like, it, it, when I had downtime, when the show had gone off the air, uh, I had a media brunch. And so, for the media brunch, I was like, I really want to have some merchandise, and I'm not sure what. And everybody was like, well, what about the Fight for Fairy Tale thing you keep talking about? So, I was like, oh, okay, let's throw that on a T-shirt. Throw it on a T-shirt, turn it into, like, the only thing I like care about now. Like on top of all the other things I care about, Five Year Fairy Tale is my life because like I mean I'm wearing the bracelet. I'm like <laughs> she brought a I, mug that like I'm literally wearing the I have to drink out the oh, water bottle because it. it's like I'm like I'm fighting right now. Like yeah. everything it just means so much. And so it really started with a few t shirts and just brand awareness and really like teaching people about my experience because people are like, tell me how you got here. And I'm like, right now first read the shirt. Second, I can tell you after. But the fight to the fairy tale that I didn't realize existed in the way that it did is exactly how I got there. And then it just started growing and people really were, were were feeding into it and really believing it for themselves. And I was like, wow, this is like a blessing. And so then I started expanding the brand with my team and whew, it was a journey. It's bracelets and t-shirts and we're working on some new stuff for 2018, which I'm really excited about. And so, you know, and just a lot of people have come together to support it. Like people who are buying and people who are telling other people, you bringing it up. Like, I just, I can't believe like how much it's, it's grown. And so I just hope it continues to grow. And it really is like now becoming the forefront of everything because it leads like the journey, you know what I'm saying? Where you just fight for something you believe in. So when I tell people that I really want them to know everybody is meant for greatness and whatever that looks like for them. And so, you know, we live in Los Angeles, but not just Los Angeles in the world. We have a very specific idea of what our fairy tale is supposed to be. Sometimes we're fed by the media. Sometimes we're fed by our, our movies or our TVs or our books. 
but we never think like that will that can't exist for me it's just like mm-hmm. what i'm supposed to read and whatever or experience through a film or tv or something and it's like no like we are allowed to get the fairy tale that we want it just has to be a fight mm-hmm. and then i also realized the fairy tale was in the fight i'm like <laughs> what like as i'm living it i'm telling you guys this is like all it's just transpiring growing for me within this year cuz i'm like wait the more like the the schedule you just said that's the fairy tale right there that I even have the opportunity to say whatever I said. Because there was definitely a day when someone said, what do you have to do today? And I'm like, nothing. Mm-hmm. I have nothing to do today. And it used to hurt me because I'm like, I don't even know what to create. I don't even know what to do. Because sometimes we're like, oh, you know, money, this, that, and they're totally get it. I'm, the, I'm one of the first people who will understand when it's a grind, it's a grind. Mm-hmm. But if it's a grind for the fairy tale... It's so worth it. It's so worth it. We're all doing it. So mm-hmm. that's kind of where it came from. And that's, I wear it on my sleeve now. And I hope everybody supports stacyag.com. Check it out. I love it. And yeah, I just, it's it's everything to me. Because I'm like, wow, like it's kind of making me see the world in a different way. It's making me see my job in a different way. My friends, like everything. I want us, I want us to really fight for this. Like we deserve it. God is so much bigger than us. Like mm-hmm. he's so good. I think that for me, I'm a very faith-based person. I know that might not be everybody, but that's fueling a lot of how I got to where I am. So I'm like, guys, like he's already created the fairy tale. Like we just have to, and, and the fight is also where you learn the most about yourself. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I learned absolutely. a lot about myself. I'm like, what does your family think about all of this? Because you come from a big family. Yeah, they're And crazy. everyone has big personalities. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, they're a lot. <laughs> we're a lot, actually. Yeah, no, we're nuts. She probably watched my Instagram story during, oh my God, you during Thanksgiving. Think- oh my gosh. Oh my the goodness. The Ikes. Girl. <laughs> They get down. I Ooh, it was like so it. fun. It was so much fun. It was a good thing. Wait, where are you from originally? Houston, Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So have awesome Nigerian parents and great family, great siblings. My I'm the oldest of and five of us total. So a lot of great personalities. Um, my family is extremely supportive. I think they are also on this journey with me because they had no idea what it meant when I was going to move to LA because I was like, Hey guys, so like, I don't have a job. I don't really have any money, but I'm going to quit my job in Houston. I'm going to move to LA. And they were like, "Dang!" (laughs) Like, (laughs) but we definitely sent her to college, you know, like, and I saw their face and I ignored it. And I was like, it's cool. I booked my ticket. It's a one way taking these two bags to Southwest. We're out of (laughs) here. And you know, they dropped me off and they said, we love you. And what, whatever it's going to take for you to be the person you want to be or like who you feel you're supposed to be, like that's what we're going to support. And they did. And I'm very proud of it. I tell them that um, pretty often because I'm like, I know when I presented my, the LA dream to them, they were like, but what about what you went to college for? You know, like, because <laughs> right. I went to school for journalism. So they really bought into the news version of right. it. They're like, well, that makes Same sense. That. Like, yeah. do that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't think that's it. And so that was, that was hard, I'm sure. My siblings, they're so much fun. They're very, Like, we send the best text messages to each other. Like, we always say something like, um, you can never complain about too much on your plate when the goal was to eat. Like, that's a theme we always have in our text. And I think it came from, like, a song or something. But we're like, whenever we get really stressed, it's like, the goal is to eat. So keep the plate going. Like, stack it up. And sorry, that's just what it is. So it keeps us Mm -hmm. all encouraged because each of them are very creative and they have their own creative spaces that they're working in and killing it too. Um... But yeah, like, it's funny because I go home and nobody really cares what I do. Like, they love it, but take out the trash. You know what I mean? It's like, (laughs) nobody cares. Like, no. Like, it's so, even this this Thanksgiving, I went home and my aunt was like, hey, can you pick us up? And I was like, I don't really feel like doing that. She was like, oh, that's cute. You thought you had a choice. I was like, wow, I'm so back home. So, like, that's the humbleness. Like, no one's going to let me not stay true to who I am. And that's what's really beautiful about family, too. So they're they're very supportive. I, I know they get a little nervous. And I'm like, hey, like, you know, back in the day, if you say, like, a show got canceled or I'm not doing this or I moved jobs or I got fired, they're mm-hmm. like, ah, we really don't know how to react. You know, yeah. like, you can feel it, but it's all good. So I'm, I'm just happy that they're they're along with the ride. Yeah. Yeah. Earlier in the show, we talked a little bit about admitting our faults. Mm. Um, do you have difficulty doing that? Not anymore. No. I think because... I work with too many people and I actually was just telling my mom this and another friend this. I'm actually not allowed to have an ego in what I do because I decide if you decide to be a boss Mm -hmm. and you want people to be to work with you, work, work for you, whatever the case is, you everything starts and ends with you. That is the hardest sentence I have ever had to understand and learn and digest everything. So when things mess up and you're like, (gasps) it's you got to point at you first. And then you figure out, was it, was, did you do everything you need to do as the boss of your company, your brand, whatever? 
So in this year, I mean, I'm telling you, I have grown so much more. There are so many moments that I want to like point a finger or be mad at somebody else or whatever, because I want to, it's easier to place blame. I really don't want to deal with the stress of knowing that it, it was actually my fault. And, you know, and most of the times, even if it was my fault, it's my fault. Mm -hmm. And that's a very crazy, mature place for me to be right now. But I think right now, no, like egos, when I have it, I say I have an ego. I'm like, hey guys, I really don't like that this happened. I'm sorry. This is how I wanted this to go. Um, when it's, when I have an insecurity, I'm extremely vocal about that too, which takes a lot of growth to, and I say it all the time, right before I say the insecurity, I say, I hate that I have to be myself right now. And like they, everybody laughs cause they're like, oh my God, go ahead. And I'm like, I'm insecure about this, or I don't want this to happen, or I need you to do whatever the case is. So I've gotten like, I've seen it in myself. I'm like, girl, you are like telling your business or being yourself all the time. And you, there's no other way to do it if you want to grow. And if you want to be the boss, like right. we all said we want to be. That requires a very like tuned in level to the ego, to all this, to all the regular human stuff that we all have. But I've been reading this book called Ego is the Enemy, which has also like really been pumping that into me too by Ryan Holiday. Yeah, it's the enemy, man. You just don't have time for it. Like, and right. it blocks the blessing, it blocks the mm -hmm. growth, it blocks the mistake that you're supposed to make to get to the magic. So all that, girl, I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's still hard. I'm not saying I'm perfect at it, mm -hmm. but I am very cautious of it. Like. You just, if you're going to be the boss, like you, you can't, you can't keep all that in and then say, Hey, I need you to do this for me. Like you can't do it if right. you want to be effective right? and you want people to really like believe in your mission. So, yeah. Well, that's some free advice if I ever heard. <laughs> I know. I've learned so much. I could just like listen to you um, oh talk all day, but do, we'll probably have you on again yeah. because you have a lot of story to tell. Um, but I know you said it before, but one more time, where can everyone follow you on Instagram yeah. and all that? Yeah, you guys can check me out on Twitter and Instagram at One Take Stace, O N E T A K E S T A C E, and stacyike.com. I'm super social. Um, and I just love to interact. I think it's like my favorite thing now because I feel like social media is now more of a community mm -hmm. than just like, oh, I look cute. It's like, no, like you get to talk and react and love on each other, and it's, it's really dope. So come hang out. I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Stacey. Mm -hmm. And um, we will see you guys or hear you guys or you'll hear us. Next week. <laughs> okay. Bye guys. Bye. All of those things will happen. <laughs> <laughs> Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at boss, please pod. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe on iTunes. Navigate the path to your best self with us because bossing together is always better.